All right, um, it's about time for another video review of a recent purchase from ClassicFirearms.com. This happens to be a K31 carbine that I recently received. And rather than do an unboxing, because everybody knows what a cardboard box and a bunch of bubble wrap looks like, I've just set this up on a uh, bistro table, bistro table, and um, it's straight out of the box, straight out of the bubble wrap. Haven't even wiped it down. So anyway, it's a K31 straight pull uh, carbine, as you can see by that charging handle on the uh, on the side at the back of the receiver. Doing a serial number search, this one's in the 890,000 range, so that makes it manufactured in 1947. And if I'm reading my specs correctly, that makes it about one of less than uh, 21,000 produced. This particular model, the K31, started production in 1933 and ran through 1958. So it had a run of 26 years. And uh, the serial number search um, puts it in, manufactured in 1947, as I said before. So it's post-war. Um, I doubt that it saw any heavy-duty action other than the uh, Swiss Guard and or the fact that, you know, every male... Uh, citizen was issued a rifle in Switzerland and the uh, the engineering on this thing is amazing I did opt for uh, a hand select um, I for uh, exterior conditions I didn't check off the other box for the troop tag and um, I'll be honest with you I did pull off the butt plate and there was no troop tag underneath there but overall, great condition. Um, Bluing's got a little bit of loss here and there. I'm not an expert in woods. Um, it looks a little darker than some of the beech woods that I've seen on the site. So I'm thinking maybe it's walnut. I mean, the upper handguard piece looks a little bit lighter than the rest of it. There's minimal bluing loss, you know, particularly um, the, the most noticeable is on the, uh, the bottom of the magazine uh, floor plate. But um, this seems to be a great weapon. We inspected it at my FFL transfer dealer. Next up, definitely a, a Curio and Relic 03 FFL license. But anyway, um, she put a bore light down the bore, and without even cleaning it up, the thing looks mirror bright. Um, I recently received a little bit of ammo for this thing, um, the GP11, and if it wasn't raining like crazy here in uh, New Hampshire today, I'd be out on the range after cleaning this thing up and test firing it. So anyway, I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit here and there, and uh, then I'll try to throw some still photos at the end of this review. But overall, I mean, what a great experience. Um, 309. I believe was the price point three hundred nine ninety nine plus uh, twenty dollars for the exterior cosmetics. Great weapon, I got to admit. It's the heaviest carbine that I own out of the lot. So you know, I mean, toting it around would be a pain in the butt. But these things are renowned for their accuracy, and that's that's next on my agenda to check that. I also do want to scope it because of uh, eye challenges. And I've been looking for a uh, amount that won't um, alter the rifle in any way because this is just a great example. It came with uh, the brass muzzle protector, um, a sling that's dated 1946, and I requested um, numbers matching in the notes, and that's exactly what I received. So anyway, hold on, and uh, I'll zoom in on it. This is an area where a lot of them get chewed up, and from what I'm reading, it's from you know the uh, the ice crampons or whatever you want to call them that the Swiss used to have, and then they'd sling this over their shoulder and it'd get the snot beat out of it. But this one isn't all chewed up. Like I said, I haven't even wiped this thing down with a paper towel. So we'll go down the length of the rifle. There's the uh, safety slash firing ring the charging handle or bolt if you will. Bluing looks pretty good. You know a few dings here and there. 
nothing major. Notice how I said the upper handguard seems to be a lighter shade. You can notice it right there. And on that back uh, handguard band, you notice a little bit of bluing loss, but nothing major. My beat to crap uh, range bag. And complete with the brass muzzle cap. So I'm going to do some top down shots um, in a later part portion of this film. But this is a great weapon, and I can't wait to get out to the range with it. Alright, so we'll run across the top. A little bit of bluing loss right there, nothing major. Nice crisp Swiss emblem. Again, a little bit of bluing loss on the high points. Not too many dings through there. And of course the muzzle protector is going to have a lot of loss. That probably went on and off. And from back to the fore end. Nice sling. That will clean up easily with some saddle soap or whatever. Just a nice, nice underside. Again, not all chewed up. Wood finish is mostly there. A little bit of wear on the trigger guard. And like I said, on the uh, magazine floor plate. No major corrosion. None of that good stuff. Barrel bands screw on as opposed to the M9130s that basically push off. Nice little Swiss mark right there. little bit of wear on the uh, bolt handle. Eh, a ding right there. No big deal. I'd hesitated for a while and these constantly go out of stock so when I saw it come back on I said you know what no pun intended, time to pull the trigger. And I got a funny feeling based on uh, some reports that I've heard from other users and uh, other uh, gun aficionados that I'm really going to love this. Another uh, thing that I was pretty amazed at is the uh, what appears to be almost like a two-stage trigger. You uh, pull it back halfway and then the final uh, bit of travel seems to be extremely crisp, um, a fairly light pull. And like I said, I can't wait to get out to the range. Try this out at 100 yards. Um, I'll flip it back up. The sight's graduated out to 1,500 meters. I mean, if you do the math... Um, that's pretty close to a mile, so I don't think I'll be shooting anything at a mile a mile off in the distance. But um, another fine example of uh, a surplus surplus weapon purchase from ClassicFirearms.com. Thanks again. God bless. Keep the good.